welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And in the next few videos, I'm going to be producing a series uh, which will be focused mainly on my ebook called uh, An Introduction to the Single Variable New Calculus. This is the most important mathematics book ever written. It's more important than Euclid's elements. It's more important than anything Isaac Newton or Leibniz or Cauchy or Gauss or anybody else ever wrote in the history of mankind. So I am going to talk about it and explain uh, try to explain as much as I can uh, using the book as a guide, obviously, because I can't remember everything. And let's see in how many videos I can get through the entire book. So I'm not going to cover every paragraph, but try to cover all the important concepts. So let's begin. As I said, <clears throat> the book is called, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> An Introduction to the Single Variable New Calculus. And so this, this book is meant for anyone who is serious about mathematics. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you have a PhD in mathematics or you've won the Fields Medal <laughs> or you've even won a great prize like a Nobel Prize prize or anything. What I'm revealing to you in this book has never been revealed. Uh, nobody before me had my understanding of calculus. Uh, it's a big claim, but if you take the time and the effort to understand what I'm telling you, you'll see that my understanding of calculus is profound. Uh, and, and no one has ever had the understanding I have, not only of calculus, but also of mathematics. It's, uh, it's definitely not, not cranky to say that I'm probably the greatest mathematician ever, even though I'm saying it about myself. It's actually true. Um, in many ways, it's actually true. That doesn't mean I know everything. I don't. I plainly admit that. But it's just that what I know I know pretty well, and there's no one who's come before me who's ever had my understanding. Okay, so you can think I'm a psychopath or a crank, that's fine. That's your problem, not mine. But in any case, this book that I've given to you free of charge, and it's the beginning, by the way, I haven't shared everything with you, and I have no intention of doing that. Uh, but you will learn a lot if you study what I have written in this book. So the chapters that I've written are roughly 13 chapters with a final remarks chapter. But I start off with a brief history of the most relevant events. In other words, a lot has taken place in the study of mathematics and most of it is utter rubbish and doesn't really have any uh, useful purpose or meaning in the world that we live in today or that we're going to see in the future. It's really just uh, mathematics more than it is anything else that can be used or that can uh, have uh, a profound impact on the future of humanity. Okay, so that's what I'm going to look at, a brief, at in a brief history. And if I've got time, I'll carry on into the ne next chapter. So let's look quickly, well not quickly, uh, in, in due time, at the brief history. So, you know, the very concept of number, it's, it's been a, a, a real big problem because before I came along, there wasn't even a, a proper definition of number. So what is a number really? By the way, this ebook is available online and I'll provide a link to it so that you can read it. 
Uh, I'm going to talk slowly because I have trouble breathing. If you don't like it, you can just go straight to the book and read it, but I can't do anything about it. Okay, so now, uh, there was never a proper definition of number before I came along. Nobody understood what is a number. Nobody even had a clue what Euclid or the ancient Greeks were attempting to do when they wrote down the elements. In Greek, it's called tastichia to Euclidi. That means the elements of Euclid, okay? So it's not only the most important book because it's still used today, it's the most important book, uh, until my book that is, of course, because it attempted to derive all the concepts, the well-formed concepts of mathematics from nothing. In other words, the concepts that exist independently of any sentient being, okay? In other words, you don't have to think about them for them to be well-formed. An alien could think of those concepts too. And the only glory the ancient Greeks have is that they happen to think of these things first. But if they didn't, somebody else, somewhere down the line of all these humans, would have eventually thought of them or in some alien civilization, if they did derive number from well-formed concepts, they would have done the same thing in the same way that the Greeks did it. Okay, big claims, but you'll see as you study my book that everything I say is true. There has been this absolutely idiotic notion that axioms are required in mathematics. Actually, axioms are just beliefs. <laughs> Any old fool can believe in anything, but Greek mathematics is not based on axioms, and the word axiom doesn't even appear in Euclid's elements, neither does the word postulate. In fact, those Greek words were not even around in the time that Euclid wrote the elements. So they came much later, and they were introduced as a result of those who translated the original Greek te text not being able to understand what they were reading. Now, Thomas Heath was one of those people, and not to take anything away from him, he, he did a pretty good job, except he missed the point where the five requirements, not axioms, were concerned. Uh, he thought that they couldn't be derived from nothing, and one didn't follow systematically on the, on the other. He was wrong, and all the thousands of morons who came before me were wrong too. I am right, but all of them were wrong. And you'll see, if you study what I tell you, that I am right, and that those were not axioms, but requirements that could be derived from scratch. So you'll get orangutans like Judith Grabener in her Cauchy and its supposedly rigorous origins talking about, you know, all these things. That poor woman wouldn't be able to tell her ear from her toe uh, in, in real mathematics. She knows nothing about rigorous mathematics or calculus. Neither do you if you're watching this. You can't know because I'm telling you and I'm the first one to tell you. Yeah, that sounds arrogant. But, you know, you better think about it carefully before you click that X button on the top. What I'm telling you, nobody else knows. And I'm telling you for the first time in your life. So pay attention. Okay. Now, in the first chapter, I cover just the brief event. So one of them is, you know, this, this myth that the foundations of mathematics had to be re established. And I cover all of that by showing you that Cantor, George Cantor, was an incredible idiot who knew nothing about mathematics. And set theory does not replace in any form, way, or shape the original foundations of mathematics, which are Euclid's elements. And so I discuss that, and I show you many interesting facts in the first chapter about the so-called new foundations, first order logic, the Bourbaki group in France, and many other uh, 
misguided notions about mathematics and how the morons who came before me tried to uh, create a new foundations, which obviously is flawed and never worked and never will work. A number describes the measure of a magnitude or a size. A magnitude is like a size. It's not like a size, it is a size. It's just an idea. It's, it's the question one asks when one thinks, thinks about size. How big is it? How small is it? How fat is it? How stupid are you? How clever are you? How tall? How short? You get it? Okay, so a magnitude <laughs> isn't a number. A number is the measure of a magnitude. And in this book, I show you how to perfectly derive number in subsequent chapters. But this is pretty important because this is something that hasn't been understood by the orangutans who came before me. They've never understood fractions. They don't even have a clue what is a fraction. Uh, and I show you exactly how the Greeks put together all the theory of the fractions. Nobody was able to do this before me because they never understood Euclid's elements. And so they've never known. As a result, we've got misguided notions of area and volume in mainstream mathematics. And there's never been the understanding of area and volume being the product of arithmetic means. Okay. And there is a general formula for area and a general formula for volume. And I was the first to understand that. Actually, I was the first to understand a lot of things, uh, regardless of what you hear being said about me on the internet. I'm not a crank. I don't have any psychological diseases. Yeah, I suffer from depression, but that doesn't hinder at all my high IQ and my intelligence. I'm smarter than anybody I know. Um, so don't, don't fall for the libel that you read on the internet and all those morons who, who, whom I've refuted many times over, but unfortunately they fail to see their errors and they refuse to see their errors. Even those who see what I'm telling them do not want to accept my correction and I am correcting you. I'm correcting the whole of humanity. I guess if there is <laughs> such a thing as destiny or predestination, maybe that's the reason I was born, to correct all the morons of the last few hundred years. Well, of course, don't take that seriously. I don't really believe in predestination or any of that nonsense. And I'm an atheist, meaning that I don't have a personal God. Okay, so now... I go through a lot of misguided notions showing relevant events in mathematics. Uh, what, what is a magnitude? What is a number? I talk about Cauchy and his ill-formed limit concept. And then I go in the second chapter into the discussion of what it means for a concept to be well-defined. Okay, so all I want to do in this first video is just Leave it at that. I'm telling you things that you've never heard or seen or even imagined in your wildest dreams simply because you don't have my intelligence. Is That's not being arrogant. It's a fact. You just don't know what I know. You're a moron, chances are. When I say moron, I mean it in the sense that you're far less intelligent than I am. And does it matter? Yes, it matters. And don't take my word for it. I'm not asking you to believe anything I say. Please. Read what I write, and you'll see that you've been an idiot and that you haven't understood mathematics. Whether you have a PhD in mathematics and you've written a dissertation on some vector spaces or some uh, homo homo homology or isomorphism or anything else, all the bullshit that you've studied, it's nothing compared to what I'm telling you in the series of videos. You've never understood calculus, and you don't have to believe me. Just read my book and you'll see that you have no clue and that you've simply just regurgitated and memorized the crap you've been taught in mainstream mathematics. Okay, so I'm a little tired right now. I know I haven't gone on for long, but I really can't. 
In the next chapter, I'll talk about what it means for a concept to be well-defined. But just to summarize, set theory has not replaced <laughs> the foundations of mathematics. In fact, nobody, nobody who came before me understood the foundations of mathematics, except the ancient Greeks, perhaps. And they didn't manage to write it down perfectly. Euclid almost got it right, but unfortunately, some of his definitions are circular and they're not uh, well formed. And I've corrected all that. And I show you a systematic derivation of all the five requirements and how one builds up on the other. And I derive number for you. And then I give you the first and only rigorous formulation of calculus in human history. So this series is to be continued. Till next time, this is the New Calculus Channel. My name is John Gabriel. Goodbye.